Hi, I'm Pastor Joe Spence. I know this message is going to encourage you, strengthen you, and take you to the next level. Stay tuned to the end. I want to pray a special prayer with you. Enjoy the broadcast. Uh, the title of my message is Good Soil. And I believe I'm looking at people here this morning that are good soil. Say, I'm good soil. Actually, it's called good ground. Say, I'm good ground. Amen. By faith, we are good ground. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they might get filled. No, for they shall get filled. The Bible is very clear. If you hunger for the things of God, if you hunger for righteousness, he will fill you. He will meet you. But he says you must hunger. There's a hunger element to receiving from God. There's a, there's a, there's a component that, that, that can't be skipped. You cannot miss this part. You have to get hungry for these things. You will only go so far just showing up. Just showing up. I go to church every Sunday. But, but your life, how you, what your life looks like really shows me what you're putting into action and what you're not. The Bible is very clear. Be doers of the word. You have to put into action what you're learning here if you're going to see the results. He says, don't deceive yourself thinking that, if you, that, that you're going to get anything done if you don't put this word into action. And so, you know, so, so I, I, I want the inactivity, come on, to be, to be cut out from this place, cut out from your life, come out, cut out from your family's life. Uh, it's time to get, to get hungrier than you've ever been for God. I'm telling you, there, there are things that God wants to do with you and your family. He's waiting on you to get hungry. He's waiting on you to, to have some passion. I like what, 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 uh, what, what um, Pastor Leanne said, put your personality into it. Like, like, like getting enthusiastic about this, right? Well, that's not how my is. In. Yeah, but you go to the baseball game. Ah, you start screaming and yelling. And football. I have no problem with that. I go, I yell like you don't believe. I'm telling you, I go to the football game. I'm booing, yelling, screaming. I'm excited. But, but, but that's, I don't just do that there. I get more excited about Jesus. I don't come here and I'm like, uh, uh. no, I start thinking about, oh, what God has done for me. Oh, where would I be without Jesus? Oh, he's the savior of my soul oh thank you lord you saved me from the pit of destruction oh i was on my way to hell but you snatched me from the jaws of the enemy oh and you put my foot on solid ground and i have a purpose and a plan oh yes and i'm moving forward in that plan oh man it's wonderful it's wonderful it's wonderful even though in time of worship even you guys did a great job worship today was so good it was so good. It's so easy to get into the presence of God, to lift our hands and to, to, to think about and to, to meditate on what God has done for us. We have a part to play. We are responsible for, 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 for fulfilling the destiny that God has for us. He prepares it, but we have to walk it out. We have to agree with him. The Bible says very clearly that, that, that he puts before us life and death, bless, blessing and curse. We have to choose life. We have to make the decision to align ourselves with him. He gives us all a free will. He will never override your will. So much so that he'll let you go to hell if you want to go to hell. And we know that it's his will that no man should perish. But yet there are people perishing every day. Am I right? People going to hell every day. Every single day. But isn't it the will of God that they, that they not go to hell? Yeah, but people aren't lining up with that. But we are people that line up with God's plan. We are people that, that want to agree with him, that want to fulfill our destinies, that want to go all the way with him. We are not satisfied with just religion. We're not satisfied with the status quo. We're not satisfied with just coming together and singing a few songs and having a, a nice little talk. We're, we want the power of God. Come on, we're interested in growing in the word of God. We're interested in revelation and understanding. We're interested in seeing the plan of God fulfilled in our kids lives and, and in our families lives amen this is a hungry bunch here in this church and we must we must tend to this we just like you, you when you go camping and you make a fire you can't just set the fire and walk away you got to sit there sometimes poke it add to it remove some things shift some things fan some things right and that's what we're doing right now i'm preparing us for next week i'm telling you i feel something significant on the inside of me for next week i feel like next week is going to be really really important for a lot of you i'm telling you and so it's time. It's time to, to, to really prepare the soil, <laughs> which is we are the soil. We're preparing the soil for the seed that's getting ready to be planted this upcoming week. 
And, and, and for the rest of your life, really, for the rest of your life. This isn't just about this week. It's about pre- learning how to prepare uh, your heart to receive the word. Because we're going to look at the parable of the sower, and it's pretty astounding. It's actually pretty crazy to think that 75% of the people that hear the word don't get results. One in four ground, one, it, well, let's read it. Let's go ahead and go there right now. Go to, go to um, go, we're going to read Luke's account. A couple of the Gospels have the parable of the sower, but I want to read Luke's account. And you have to be careful while you turn there. You have to be careful with rejecting the repetition of the word. Right, well, I've heard that already. Oh, I know that already. Very careful with that. The repetition of the word is absolutely necessary for your growth. Absolutely necessary for your growth. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, don't go there. But, uh, you, they can put it up. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6. I have planted... Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. There's the planting of the word. The first time you hear the word, right? The seed of the word goes into you, you get excited. Then there's the watering of the word, which is the repetition of the word. And you have to have the repetition in order for God to bring the increase. It's absolutely necessary. So sometimes it's very easy to hear a message that maybe you think you know something about and check out. But there's always more that God wants to show you uh, in, in, in terms of revelation, in terms of understanding. So we have to make sure we always come w- w- with a posture of I'm ready to receive. Uh, I, I may hear this for the 10th time, but Lord, thank you that you're showing me this again. Thank, thank you, Lord, that, that you're giving me another shot to learn and to grow and to develop in this area so that I can get results. Because God is after you bearing fruit. He desires for you to bear fruit. He desires for you to have results in your life. So the watering of the word is so important uh, that, that, that if, you, if, you, if you neglect it, you can get in trouble. And so, you know, if you hear a message, how many of you ever heard a message and you say, man, that message really ministered to me? How many of you ever heard that? How many of you ever said that after you've been in a service or, or maybe you've listened to a YouTube or, or a CD? You need to listen to it again. If you, if you say that, if you feel that on the inside, like, man, that really ministered to me, that's, that light bulb should go off. Oh, again, again, I, I need to go back to that. I need to listen to that. Something stirred on the inside of you. And that, that's, a, that's a good indicator that, man, there's more that your spirit wants on that subject. Go back. Listen to it again. There are tapes that I've listened to countless times because it ministers to me. I could literally finish their every sentence because I've heard the message so much. But every time I listen to it, I get something different. I hear something a little different than I, than I did, or, or I, I get more understanding. And sometimes I'm like, wow, I didn't even, I didn't even hear him say that the first 10 times. Like, wow, but, but I, I know I listened to it, but, but my spirit was alert just a little bit more, and, and I got something else that helped me. Man, anytime you get instruction from the Word of God, the Bible says that it's profitable unto all things. So when you're receiving the Word, it's profiting you in every area of your life. Profiting you in your marriage, profiting you in your health, in your finances, come on, in, in your state of mind, in your peace, in your joy. So, so the word, you're not just doing this out of some religious habit, right? You, you're doing this because it, it will profit you in every area of your life. Strong spirit will sustain a man in times of trouble. We know that times of trouble come to everybody. Right? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. They will come. You're going to have storms that come your way, but it, it, the, the determining factor is, is your strength? Spirit strong enough, come on, to, to, to stand firm. Are you rooted enough in the things of God that, you, that when, the, when, you, when the things start to blow, you don't break? You just bend a little bit. Your roots are so strong that no matter what comes, you're not going to go flying. Amen. And that's what God is interested in doing for you, right? And, and he wants to show you how to do it, how, how you can put down roots so strong that the devil can throw his best shot. And, and, and you just go, bing, <laughs> nice try, devil. That's your best shot. It's not enough to take me and my family out. Come on, we're still standing. We're moving forward. I'm growing, devil. You can't mess with me. Amen. I know who I am in Christ. Glory be to God. Come on, praise God. I got the name of Jesus. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the word. I'm growing. Come on, amen. I have ears to hear. I'm a doer of the word. Hey, man, me and my family are progressing in the things of God. Yes, that's your testimony in Jesus' name. That's your testimony in Jesus' name, growing in the things of God, fulfilling the plan of God for your life. There is no better plan than the plan of God for your life. I've said it many times. I promise you. They could say, Joe, you want to be the president? You, tomorrow we'll sign you out. You'll be the president. I said, nope, that's a downgrade. Why? Because that's not what I'm called to do. 
I'm in my office right now. Well, don't you think you could do a lot good there? No, but that's not what I'm called to do. I could, do the mo- I could be the most effective doing what I'm supposed to do with God's backing. Imagine I go step out and do something I think is better without God's backing. How I many know recipe for trouble? Right? So God wants you to fulfill your destiny. Amen. All right, go to Luke. Go, go to Luke. That's a whole other message. But Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. I'm going to start in verse 9. Actually, Luke chapter 8, verse 4. Luke chapter 8, verse 4. And when much people were gathered together and, were com- and were came, to- came to him out of every city, he spoke by a parable. You know, a parable is just the definition of a parable according to the dictionary. is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. So Jesus often used these parables to illustrate a, a, a point or to, to, to give a lesson so that people could understand them better. That's just what a parable is. So verse 5, a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon the rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Verse 7, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and it choked it. And others fell on good ground. Say, I'm good ground. I'm good ground. And sprung up and bore fruit a hundredfold. And he had said these things, he cried, he that has ears, let him hear So fruit is another word for results, right? It's another word for results. Let's keep reading verse 9. And his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? Verse 10, and he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but the others in parables, that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Verse 11, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. So as you read this, keep this in mind, the seed, he's, he's given an illustration, the seed is the word of God. Verse 12, those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So first type of ground we see is wayside, and they got no results, no results. Verse 13, then uh, they on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and they have no, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. So it's progressive. You see, they got a little bit further. They received the word. They got excited about the word, but they were quick to quit. They, they threw in the towel too soon. Uh, things started to come against them. They saw things. They, they, they felt things that were contrary to what, what the Bible says, and they went with those things. And so they got no results. Verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. So they got a little bit further than the first two, right? They heard the word. Uh, they, 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 they received the word. They, they didn't quit the first time, maybe, that, that, they, that, 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 that what they felt or what they saw was contrary to what they believed. They stayed in the fight some, but they had too many things going on. The Bible says that they had too many things uh, that, 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 that were in their head, right? And so what, what, what could that look like? A lot what Pastor Sarah was talking about, you know, uh, you're giving too much time to one thing instead of putting God first. And so, you know, uh, maybe you're thinking all day about golf, Not wrong with going golf but if you're spending all your time golfing how I many know you ain't gonna be as strong as you need to be <laughs> right you may be spending all your time out doing I, I golf I got clubs I belong to the I, but you must put what God says first you must put him first you must develop in the things of God first and, and when you do that that takes first place in your life if you have too many things going on uh, these things will choke out uh, what God is trying to do it, it, it says that uh, that the pleasures of this life, you know, uh, uh, going to, listen, I'm not, not, you go, you have a house somewhere, that's great. But if every Sunday you're out there doing, you know, enjoying the boat uh, every Sunday when you, when you should be getting strong in church, nothing wrong going to the boat, nothing, I'm just saying, when you 
things are out of order, things don't work. That's when those things start to choke out what God is trying to do. And, and then when the fight comes, you're not going to be strong enough. The word isn't going to be there. You, you spent all your time at Bass Pro, and you know so much about what fishing lure to use, and, and you know so much about what rifle to use, but you have no idea how to fight the devil. No clue how to win in faith because, because you, you were here, you were excited, but you, you, you didn't continue down that path and you didn't allow that to, to be strong on the inside. Other things got stronger than the word. Come on, the pleasures of this world. Nothing wrong. I'm telling you, nothing wrong. I hunt too. Listen, I hunt. I have a bow. I have a rifle. I enjoy those things. But I don't know more about that than I do about winning in life with God. I'll tell you that right now. This is more important than anything else to me. Right? Because it's, it's astounding that 75% of people that hear the word according to this don't get results. This is Jesus teaching this. He's saying, listen, listen to me. Only one, 25% of people are good ground, and they're right here, Life in Christ Church. Amen. Life, life in Christ Church, full, full of good ground. We are. The one percent, I know. <laughs> you can say that too, right? We are good ground here in this church. Good ground. We, we desire these things. We, we want to move forward in these things. Man, I, I don't want to be thorny ground. <laughs> I don't want to allow the cares of this world, the cares. You know anxiety and worry will choke out the word from you? Literally choke it out of you. Worry. You worrying all day, all day. And some people, the devil has, has tricked into, into, into them thinking that worry is actually a form of love. Well, the reason why I love you, the reason why I worry is because I love you. Because I, I care so much. No, it's demonic. Listen to me. Worry will choke out, according to Jesus, the master. Worry will, ch the cares of this world will choke out the word of God. From, from, from going down in and, and, and producing in your life. Man, worry, I'm telling you, worry is deadly. The Bible's clear. Well, when has worry done, done anything? Worry has never done anything for anybody. Oh, you, some of you think if you don't worry, that means you don't care. Some of you think that if you don't worry, you don't care. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That's the enemy lying to you. And, and as soon as you try to stop worrying, the devil comes. Oh, you must not care. And then you feel like, oh, yeah, I, I got to get back to worrying. <laughs> I got to get back to worrying so I can show that I care. But the best thing you can do, the best thing you can do, come on, if you're worried about something, is to let it go to God. Release it. Cast your cares over unto him, the Bible says. Why? Because you're not designed to carry it. And Jesus knows that if you carry it, the word will be choked out of your life. That's why he said, cast your cares over unto him. I'm telling you, this is, this is so important. This is so vital. Worrying is like sitting in a rocking chair. You're doing a lot of motion, but you ain't going nowhere. You're just sitting there. Oh, yes, I'm worrying. I'm just, but you ain't going nowhere. You're just stuck. Right? A lot of people, professional warriors, professional warriors. I have them in my family, the professionals, professionals. We're praying for them. We're praying for them. Professionals. But I trust God. I've gotten to the place that if there's a situation that's bothering me, to release it to him. Father, show me what I can do. And he'll show you, but I, he ain't going to tell you to worry. <laughs> Worrying will not be what he tells you to do. He won't say, okay, I want you to worry. And, and it'll solve the problem. Never, never the cares of this world choke out the word of God. And you, now you see why people aren't getting results. They're coming to church, coming to the conferences, taking notes, but home in the rocking chair. And the word is being choked out. It's not working. It's not working. Here's why. Here is why. One in four get results. Say, I'm, I'm, I'm that one in four. I'm good ground. I won't allow the cares of this world to choke out the word that I receive by the grace of God in Jesus' name. Amen. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. 
Say, I keep the word. I treasure the word. I value the word. The Bible says it brings forth fruit. <laughs> it brings forth results with patience. Come on, when, 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 when you're good ground, come on, you receive the harvest. You receive the breakthrough. Come on, in your health, in your finances, a full harvest, come on, of your family serving God, a full harvest of the, of the full measure of what God wants to do in your life by his word. Amen. The full measure. And we are 100%. We are a hundredfold uh, soil in this place. 30, 60 is wonderful, but this place right here produces a hundredfold every time the word is sown. You sitting right here produce a hundredfold. Amen. You, have, you are the, who decides what soil we, we are? We do. We choose the soil. God says, I have the seed. The seed works. It's incorruptible seed, the Bible says. Incorruptible, meaning it has to work. It has to produce. If it's put in the right soil, it has to produce. Every single time, it has to. There's no way that it does not. So, obviously, if it's not working, that means that we better do a soil check. We better check the soil, right? If a crop isn't producing, they send out the guy who tests the soil, and this ain't, this ain't good soil. But, but they, they come over here, oh, yeah, this is Mississippi Delta soil. Everything grows in this soil. Right here in this place, Mississippi Delta soil. Come on. That when the incorruptible seed gets put in, it has to produce every time. Amen. Every single time. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing us this. We'll never again allow the cares of this world to choke it out. We'll never allow the deceitfulness of riches, the deceitfulness of the enemy's plan and purpose to choke out what you want to do in our lives. We're good ground, and we're going all the way, and we will see everything that you have for us come to pass. Oh, yes, we'll see it. Oh, yes, by the grace and the power of God. Oh, yes, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, say, oh, yes, oh, yes. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I want to show you um, Matthew's account real quick. You don't have to turn there, but... The wayside ground, he, des he describes the wayside I could. I got so much notes on this. This could be a 20-part series. It, I can go into every single type of ground, and, and, and maybe we will, but I'm just going to give you a quick high-level uh, overview of this. But the wayside, the, uh, another translation says the type of ground, the wayside. I think this might be, this is Matthew's account. It says that they comprehend it, then the evil one comes and snatches it away. They comprehend it. Uh, they don't comprehend it. Oh, they comprehend it, and the evil one comes and snatches away that was sown in their heart. So the enemy is after taking the seed out of your heart. You must know that when you receive a word, as soon as you leave here, the enemy is trying to snatch that out. He doesn't want that seed to, 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 to produce. He's ready to try to snatch it out. So, you know, you, have a, you ever have a great service and then go home and kind of all hell breaks loose a little bit, right? And you're like, man, I, I started off good and everything just, man, the enemy's trying to throw a wrench in there. He doesn't want you to lay hold of the word that you're receiving from this place because I believe God is showing us things on Sunday morning, showing us things on Monday prayer, showing us things on Wednesday. The word that is coming from here, I'm telling you, not because I'm the pastor, but I know it will produce in your life. I know it. I know it. When my wife preaches, man, you better listen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It'll produce in your life. What God is showing us through her, it will produce. Right? And so, but the enemy does not want that to happen. He wants to, he wants to come and snatch it out. And then he says the rock, the, right, uh, uh, the second type of ground, this is he who hears the word, welcomes it, accepts it with joy, yet it has no real root in him. But it's temporary, inconsistent. How I many of people you know are inconsistent maybe it's you <laughs> inconsistent don't point at anybody please <laughs> some of you are pointing actually uh inconsistent with these things inconsistent with these things not not following through right In being inconsistent with 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 developing and growing um 
So it says it lasts but a little while. And when affliction or trouble or persecution comes on account of the word at once, he is caused to stumble. He is repelled and begins to distrust and desert, desert him who he ought to trust and obey. So you, you, you hear the word, you get excited about the word, and then persecution comes, things start to happen, and then you actually start to, 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 to distrust and to back off of who you actually should be trusting in and obeying in. I see that so many times. You see someone who doesn't show up for weeks after they've been through some things. Well, instead of running, they ought to be clinging. They ought to be clinging, clinging to the one who, who can change it, who can help them. They receive it, but we're quick to quit. All right, the thorns, real quick, the thorns, thorny ground. Say, I'm not thorny ground. They heard it, they respected it, they were excited, and they didn't quit, right? Uh, but as we know, it had too many things, and it choked out the word. It choked out the word. But we are good ground. This place is full of people with good ground. Praise God. Good ground. Good ground. That when trials and tribulations come, right, we don't allow those things to move us off the plan and purpose of God for our lives. We stand firm. We stand firm, planted, rooted, grounded, unmovable, unshakable. Thank you so much for tuning in. I pray the message blessed you. We never like to end a broadcast without giving you the opportunity to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you mean business with God, he means business with you. I want you to join me in praying this very simple but powerful prayer. Mean it with all your heart. Repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I repent of all my sin and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you were crucified, and on the third day you rose from the dead. I give you my life. Do something with it. I believe I am now saved in Jesus' name. The Bible says all the angels in heaven are rejoicing because you just prayed that prayer. Welcome to the family of God. Thank you so much for watching. For more content, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. We pray you would consider partnering with us to see souls saved and the gospel preached around the world. God is not finished with America. Stand with us as we contend for revival in our land. Here are some ways you can give. Go to licchurch.com slash give, or you can give through our cash app, or you can scan the QR code. We love you and have a blessed day.